religion is the offspring of compassion. Indeed, religion without compassion is meaningless. And this is what we are seeing. We are talking about religion but there is no compassion. And compassion comes through meditation. When meditation attains to fruition, compassion is born in an individual. I have heard a wise man came to Nanak. He argued against God. He was an atheist. He gave beautiful arguments and examples. Nanak listened to the person attentively. Afterwards, he embraced the person and felt grateful that he came. Nanak said he is from a village and illiterate. He has never seen such expression of magnanimity and dimensions of intellect. One thing is now clear with your intellect that certainly there is a higher power that you can call God. Otherwise such a beautiful flower can never blossom. This person came to prove that there is no God. He gave very suitable arguments. Nanak did not say any word. An argument can be so precise that one thing is clear that this world is not matter alone. Consciousness is hidden deep within. The moment you realize that the very texture of this world and the finite things that we see around, it is the consciousness that is looking through these, then religion is born into you. When we see oneness, when we see invisible hands behind every action, every thought, all that we see around, this man got defeated by his own intellect and arguments. He wrote in his diary that this is very difficult to defeat a religious person. A religious person, one in whom Compassion is born, meditation has attained to fruition, he will be passive. He never gives you any opportunity to attack him. For a religious person, God is the manifestation of his trust, not any conclusion. God is his feeling, not thoughts. God is his heartbeat, not the logic of his intellect. When God becomes your heartbeat, becomes part of your feeling, then for the first time, the seeds of religiousness are being born into you. He can speak about meditation only that much which he knows and Nana continues be careful before you say anything whatever you have to say introspect it is religion alone that sustains this earth and everything on this earth. If the thread of religion is weak, then nothing can sustain. And this is what presently is happening. 
it is religion that sustains this earth. A slight mistake on your part about religion, its understanding will disturb the very texture of life. Religion sustains everything. And once you got wrong connotation about religion, your life will be scattered. Religion is not any mechanical part of a vehicle that can be changed. Religion sustains this earth. Religion is the outcome of compassion. Religion is offspring of compassion and fulfillment creates balance between the three. These three words are religion, compassion and fulfillment to sink deep within you. Without this, religion is not really religion. Religion is the basis of life and existence. Without this, life and existence will scatter. Religion means your essential nature. Just as the very quality of the fire is to burn, the quality of the water is to moisten. Wherever water goes, it moistens that place or object. The very quality of salt is its saltishness. Jesus says, I am the saltishness in the salt. I am the very quality, the intrinsic quality. Religion means your essential nature. Just as the nature of fire is heat, if fire gets cold, it is no more fire. The nature of sun is light. How can sun remain without light? Can you imagine a lightless sun? Whenever something loses its quality, it can never remain the same. When man loses meditation, he is man only for name's sake. We never criticize animals because animals live in their nature. A dog is a dog. Dog never behaves like a cat or a monkey, but parrots do. Parrots imitate everyone around. Have you ever seen a confused parrot who is trying to imitate a dog, vehicles parking, vehicles passing on the street, men arguing and quarreling? Parrot imitates all this and man has become a parrot life. Simultaneously imitating a cat, a dog, and when he goes into arguments, quarrel, nothing can be understood. But it is man alone that is not living in his nature. That is the reason that we call man by different names. We never call a dog as cat or rat. However, we use various words for man. Man can really be established in nature only when he attains to meditation. Nanak, Buddha, Jesus, Mahabir, Holy Prophet, Jaradhrust, Lao Tse, all live in their nature. Try to understand this word man. Man is a man only when he attains to meditation. Without meditation, the consciousness remains below the surface. Either it is unconscious or subconscious. And most of the time, man operates through 
his unconscious and subconscious layers, continues to lament over the past that is not there anymore. He fails to recognize the presence of this very moment because this very moment is enormous. This very moment is ultimate. And if you accept this moment in its totality, myriad possibilities open in the next moment. Next moment comes with myriad possibilities. Awareness is the nature of man. Your essential nature is the way or the door to enter in the nature of the whole. The only way to attain to God is to search deep within the roots of your essential nature. We search the roots of our ancestors, which are no more. Instead, we should seek the roots of our essential nature. We are human beings. We are born in the image of God. What else you need to search as your roots? Religion sustains everything. Religion is your nature. It is the offspring of compassion. And through fulfillment, establishes a balance. Compassion and fulfillment are two precious words. Entire life can dissolve in these two words. Compassion and fulfillment. Compassion flows outwards and fulfillment happens within. Compassion and fulfillment are two sides of the same coin. Compassion flows outward and fulfillment flows inward. Try to understand this. Compassion flows outwards and fulfillment inwards. However, you go on doing just the opposite. When you see a hungry person on the street, you say that let him attain to fulfillment. You need to be fulfilled with all that you have. You have to be satisfied. You have to be contented. But are you really contented with what you have? When it comes to you, the story is different. The moment you change the direction of these words, life becomes chaotic. Bliss will overflow out of your fulfillment and poverty will vanish when you are compassionate towards the other. Service to mankind will be the outcome. Then life will become a prayer. And if you are compassionate towards the other and not contented, then you will become a social reformer, not religious. And if you are contented but not compassionate, then you will be a dead religious. Religion indeed is the son of compassion. Establish fulfillment or contentment to create balance. One who has established balance between these two will certainly attain to the essence or the basis of life. He will come to know what religion is. Buddha used this sutra as well. He used compassion and awareness when there is compassion and awareness, a different kind of intelligence comes into you. 
awareness within and compassion outwards. Without these, your knowing remains incomplete. Life moves on two feet. A bird flies on two wings. To see complete scenery, you need two eyes. So to Nanak says, the ultimate journey needs both compassion and fulfillment. Compassion is flowing outward and fulfillment within. Only he knows how much burden is on religion. There are many universes. Still beyond this universe, there are many. Scientists have proven this, that there are many universes you cannot see the vastness of the cosmos through your finite thought process. As you attain to silence, thought process discontinues. You are under the vast infinite sky. Then you can see the vastness of this infinite sky. Also you come to know the glory of the infinite. Then you realize that you have been wasting life in finiteness. Each moment, with each event, the infinite goes on happening. But you are lost in your narrow individualistic approach. Someone has insulted you and you are upset. This is remaining in the finite and you continue to nourish and nurture this. In every event, every circumstance, every situation, if you see that which is infinite, your gestalt changes. How many species of different color and caste are there, all happening every moment. All this happens with his consent. Rarely anyone comes to know this and no one can really guess. One is stuck dazed with wonder and out of gratitude sacrifices his being at the altar. And out of ecstasy and understanding, he chants, Let thy will prevail. As you come out of the finite, you will observe the rings of blessings and jewels, and you go on embracing the petals. Nanak says, When all this happens and you enter the state of no thought, only then you can hear the echo that constantly happens in the universe. Then you can see the vastness, glory and infinite energy field. This you cannot contemplate. You cannot think about it. All thoughts fail and you are in a state of discipline. Infinite is happening every moment. How can you replay? How can you repay the bliss that is happening? Even if I sacrifice all that I have, or even many lives, still it is little bit. In such moments, you are filled with tremendous gratitude. And that gratitude becomes the very essence of your Guru. In such a state, when there is deja vu, words fail, you are filled with an inexpressible gratitude. Only one prayer remains on your lips, let thy will prevail. We say this word 
and it is like a dead saying the words and it is meaningless. This is the outcome of gratitude and understanding. Only you exist. My presence is occasional. You are ocean and I am a wave on the surface of the ocean. Wave comes and goes. One moment it is there and next moment it is no more but ocean is. Waves come and go. All that you do is good and the rest is not. Many moments will come in your life and your trust will shatter. It is on the verge. Mind will cry out what is this happening. Doubts will begin to surface. This is humanness. This is ignorance and lack of understanding. This is the difference between Jesus and Christ. Jesus symbolizes human in his uh, human element and Christ symbolizes the ultimate nature, the ultimateness. Human element complains but in Christ the human element is no more. The Jesus is no more. Jesus is enlightened. At that moment the being cries out for the ultimate. Let thy will prevail. And this very state, when let thy will prevail, becomes part of your existence. Enlightenment happens. In Christianity, this is known as Christhood. That very moment, something from the unknown realm descends and becomes part of your being. These are the words, let thy will prevail, were the words of Jesus on the cross. Let thy will prevail, Nana continues. Jesus raised his hand towards the sky as he uttered these words. He is transformed, no more human. Such is the state of all the masters. Nanak says you search that oneness amidst the five and that oneness is meditation. Nanak continues, as soon as meditation deepens, it attains fruition, compassion flows outward and fulfillment flows within. Then you are filled with gratitude. And you can say that thy will prevail. You are the formless. You alone exist. The message of the awakened ones is simple. It is one. And when you are filled with gratitude, you can see the incomprehensible diversity of God's creation through which one can reach the ultimate. And once you have recognized truth, then you can enter the experience as well. This is first step. As soon as you recognize truth, journey begins. This is how an ecstatic Nanak continues the way.